Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining today's webinar, Connect the Likes, Tracking Visits to Improve Facebook Ad Performance. My name is Melinda Pettijohn. I'm the Senior Marketing Coordinator here at Hannapin. Um, I'm joined today by Kapil, uh, Product Manager for ZenReach, and Bahador, the Paid Social Account Manager here at Hannapin. Uh, do you want to say hi, guys? Hello, everyone. This is Kapil. Hi, everyone. Great. This is Bob. Thanks for joining us today. Awesome. Um, so a couple of housekeeping things before we dive into today's presentation. Um, feel free to shoot us some questions via the GoToWebinar questions feature. Um, we will have some time for Q&A at the end, so we'll absolutely follow up with you. Um, you can also join the conversation on Twitter with the hashtag ThinkPPC. Um, so we'd really love to hear your comments on our um, presentation and, you know, converse with you all. Um, but really, yeah, there we go. Um, so before we get started, we want to do a quick poll. And this just helps us at Hannafin make sure that we are creating the right kind of content that aligns with your strategy and what you're doing with your digital marketing. Um, so if you could just fill this out really quickly. Um, yeah, we can make sure that our webinar is going forward aligned with your needs. And I'll just give this a couple more seconds. All right. Thanks everyone who voted, that's super helpful. Um, and so, again, before we get started, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on Hannapin and ZenReach. So if you aren't familiar with Hannapin, we're a digital marketing agency with expertise in paid search, paid social, programmatic, and conversion rate optimization. Because of our clients' unique challenges and the ever-changing landscape of the industry, our people get more ongoing training than airline pilots. That is absolutely true. And that means our experts are bringing you the latest updates and strategies through our content, including our blog, PPC Hero, our conference, HeroConf, our white papers, our reports, and our webinars just like these. Um, ZenReach created walkthrough marketing to help businesses with physical locations dramatically improve customer acquisition and lifetime value by connecting digital marketing with in-store results. ZenReach Engage automatically tracks customer visits, effortless, effortlessly builds rich customer profiles, and keeps them up to date. ZenReach Attract improves ad performance four times by targeting audiences based on your best customers. Results are measured with our walkthrough rate, a propriety metric that shows when someone exposed to an ad visits a location. Founded in 2012, ZenReach serves thousands of independent merchants, merchants <laughs> and leading brands like Pete's Coffee, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, and BCBG Max. Ads for you. Very cool. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our presenters today. Um, Bahador, go ahead with the content. Thank you, Melinda. So, for the first part of our webinar today, we're going to be talking about uh, Facebook offline conversions. Well, we all know Facebook campaigns with conversion type of objective. The idea is to define a standard event tracked by Facebook Pixel as a conversion. So we get to define rules. So custom conversions are registered when certain actions are triggered on a page. Like a typical scenario is visits to a confirmation or a thank you page when we're dealing with content download type of campaigns or demo registrations or email signups. Um, any more complex cases, we can set up custom conversions for like other landing pages in interactions, things like button clicks or um, time spent on a page or scroll depth or engagement with a uh, video if we're talking about uh, embedded YouTube videos. Um, but what if our desired conversion is something that's not online and therefore not trackable by Pixel? I'm talking about cases where we don't have any web page at where the final conversion action happens on. So a few examples are like a business who runs lead generation type of campaigns and follows up with leads over the phone to qualify them. 
And then, and so like in that case, they would like to track and optimize the delivery towards getting sales qualified leads or marketing qualified leads. And that's something that happens in their CRM system. And there is no pixel integrated with that CRM pixel. Another example can be a business who promotes events on Facebook. So their final and ultimate conversion is event attendance by people who have shown interest or registered for that event. Um, and another example can be like a business who runs store traffic or coupon download type of campaigns. But again, in that case, the ultimate transaction in conversion for them happens in the physical store. They would like to optimize the delivery of their Facebook ads for customers with the highest lifetime value, for example. And, and all that transactions happens in um, systems and platforms who are not connected to Facebook Pixel. So it happens like a uh, on a point of sales machine or on other different information systems uh, where there is no Facebook Pixel integration available. It is the same where uh, we are dealing with like complex offline sales processes. Uh, and as I uh, said, like event attendance can be another example. So the idea here is to leverage Facebook offline conversion features so we can connect our digital efforts and Facebook ads platform to offline activities. And this will allow us to answer questions like, which campaign or ad set or creative combination is generating the most successful phone calls if like we're talking about uh, a phone sales process or what age group or geo or gender or placement breakdown performed the best in terms of generating marketing qualified or sales qualified leads or what campaign ad set creative has generated the highest amount of in-store sales or another or whatever in, in the store type of engagement that you would like to measure so these are all answers that we can unlock the, the um, um these are questions that we can unlock answers to them by enabling in using facebook offline conversion um capabilities so basically the idea is to feed Facebook algorithm our offline transaction data, which is being generated through a CRM or point of sales system or other offline um, data tracking systems, feed that data to Facebook algorithm and Facebook matches that against our uh, campaign audience, people who have been served our ads through our Facebook campaigns and therefore Facebook can uh, find the overlap between the two and attribute uh, the basically overlap segment of that data to our um, Facebook campaigns. So in this slide, we're going to review the process uh, from very top level. So the first step is basically to define a offline event data set. So that's where we um, upload and maintain our offline transaction data. And once the data set is created, we upload our data through different methods. It can be either through like a manual upload, which I'm gonna uh, show you the steps in a second, or it can be through a third party integration uh, with a sales system or with a point of sales system uh, where those systems will feed data automatically to a Facebook offline event data set. Next step would be mapping our data to Facebook fields, because as you know, Facebook is able to track only a certain number of fields, certain type of fields. So uh, once we create our data set, we need to define the type of fields that we are feeding the system. And this upload process, uh, if it is a manual upload, upload is going to happen on certain intervals if it is um, an automatic sync while well, it happens automatically and we get to define that uh, sync interval and finally once uh, the data is uploaded and matched to um, Facebook data then we can measure our offline conversion um, performance um, 
using using the reporting features available in Facebook App Manager. And we're going to um, go through all of these steps in a second. So the first step, as I mentioned, is going to be creating that offline event set. So if you've noticed in your Facebook App Manager interface, under Events Manager, you can find this menu, uh, which allows you to add new data sources to um, to your uh, Facebook Ads platform. So the typical option is Facebook Pixel, but in this case, we're going to uh, be syncing offline data. So we're going to create an offline event set. App events are another option um, that you can have as a data source. So if you're a, um, a mobile app developer or marketing for a mobile app, uh, that's where you want to create your data source. But in um, in this presentation today, this webinar, we're talking about offline conversion, and therefore we're going to add a new offline event um, set here. And I want to remind you that Facebook always automatically creates an offline event set when you, when you create an, um, uh, a Facebook ad account. But for whatever reason, you may want to start from scratch. Maybe it is um, simply um, to make sure that you're um, dealing with a clean set of data where there is no historical transaction that may muddy up your data. So um, for, for, for that reason, probably you want to start with creating a, an offline event set from scratch. And once that is created, you get to assign your data set to different ad accounts. Um, so this is happening in the business manager level. So you get to create offline event data set and assign it to um, one or two more ad accounts. And once the data set is created, as I mentioned, we have two options. The first one is syncing it with a CRM through offline event set API. Facebook has several integrations with uh, popular CRM systems, um, call tracking systems, sales um, platforms, and they, they have a complete list, a list of all of the uh, available integrations on their website. Another option is basically uploading a spreadsheet. You can export your transactions out of um, whatever system that you're recording your offline transactions and that is not supported by the API and manually uploaded uh, with your offline event information. This process is very similar to uploading a customer list to Facebook. I'm pretty sure many of you have already uh, done that and already familiar with creating um, custom lists, uh, custom customer lists on Facebook. And um, therefore the best practice is to um, upload your data in the shortest intervals possible. Facebook recommends bi-weekly, but basically the shorter the better, the more accurate and the faster your data set is going to be updated and therefore you're going to have um, a better accuracy in terms of um, your match rate. So this is an example of uh, how it looks like in action. As you see, um, it's a simple CSV file with uh, different columns. Um, so in this case, they're uploading several email fields, several uh, phone fields. Uh, they're uploading a mobile advertising ID, first name, last name, zip code, and you know all the demo information that they have av available about their uh, transactions. And um, and the last four columns here are about the actual transaction where we're defining our event name, the event time, the value and currency. As you see, like in this case, we're uploading um, transaction with different currencies. So, um, so let's say you're running a global campaign. You can basically upload one offline event data set and have Facebook to match it to uh, different campaigns that you're running across different regions. So a few best practices about uploading your data, as I said, try to, to upload um, as much as possible and as frequent as possible. So 
uh, that will definitely help with increasing the metric, with making sure that any audience that you're going to be building off of uh, your offline tra transactions stays relevant to, um, to your targeting. Make sure that you're formatting properly. That definitely impacts your match rate. Um, and if you want to basically maximize um, your match rate and also make the process um, very scalable, make sure that you're using CRM integrations that are available. A couple examples are um, integrations with Marketo, with Square, with Salesforce, Sales Cloud, with Segment, and um, if none of that, if you are using a system that basically doesn't natively support integration with offline um, conversion sync, you can definitely use Zapier so you get to uh, create your own custom integration for, uh, for, you know, for any information system that doesn't have a native support for offline conversions. And once the data is uploaded, well, we're in a uh, look into how, how the offline transaction, um, basically how our um, digital campaigns have impacted our offline activities. So one of the column sets that um, is available in Facebook Ad Manager for reporting is offline conversion. And you get to even customize um, have your own customized column so you'll get every metric that is related to your offline conversion tracking. So in this case, as you see, uh, we're um, seeing offline purchases, offline purchase conversion value and cost per purchase. So um, we're going to be able to get breakdowns of our, our performance uh, per region, per gender, per placement, and see how each of uh, those placements have contributed to our offline activities and therefore optimize our campaigns based on um, based on how they are contributing to uh, to offline outcomes. And once this is available, once you've done your offline data sync and you have an uh, offline conversion um, data set, you get to create audiences and optimize your campaigns towards those offline actions. So um, like in this case, you, uh, you can create a custom audience based on offline activity. A couple applications for um, in real, kind of the real, um, real life use cases for um, using offline conversions are Basically, we get to optimize for offline conversions. Whatever action that you would like to optimize your the delivery of your campaigns uh, for, um, you can optimize your campaigns towards those. So the rule of thumb again is like how we have it in with regular, basically, uh, pixel track type of conversions, is to have a minimum of 50 con conversions per ad set per week. So in that way. Uh, Facebook algorithm will have enough data to optimize the delivery of um, campaigns. You also get to optimize for lifetime value. Maybe we're um, talking about the type of business where um, multiple transactions, multiple uh, purchases happen in a, uh, in a period of time. So we get to optimize the delivery of our campaigns in, uh, towards um, LTV. And Another um, feature that will be available for us after we have offline conversion data available is uh, being able to create uh, lookalike audiences based on offline conversions. Um, so, for example, we get to target people who behave similar to, uh, to people who have uh, purchased in store from us. Um, and the same is with retargeting. Maybe we want to retarget people who have uh, complete a certain offline conversion, but not the ultimate conversion that we expect them and in, in that we have designed our sales process towards that um, uh, final conversion. And also we get to retarget them based on frequency and recency. So these are all um, basically features that will be available to us after we have created an offline conversion set. Um, I'll be turning it over to Kapil, so uh, he'll be walking us through 
uh, putting offline conversions in use for in some in-store use cases that, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bahadur, uh, for that really insightful and thorough walkthrough of Facebook's offline conversion capabilities. Just as a quick reminder for everyone, my name is Kapil Mohan and I'm a product manager over here at ZenReach. Uh, before I get started, I definitely wanted to thank both Hanapin and Bahadur for allowing me to take the opportunity to, to speak with him uh, together on this really important topic of Facebook offline conversions and how those could be that feature can be coupled with really useful offline of, of data to drive meaningful business outcomes for offline businesses. I also wanted to thank everybody who signed up for this webinar um, and take a few minutes out of their day to listen to us to speak to this really useful and effective capability that <clears throat> quite honestly doesn't exist across all platforms, but it's a great one to have to be, become more efficient about your business, your marketing ad spend. So on the next slide, if you don't mind, Bahadur, before I get started on talking to you guys through some of the use cases of how ZenReach is, is, is enabling offline data to drive more meaningful business outcomes. I think it's worthwhile to take a few minutes to talk about the data side of it itself, and even furthermore, the importance of collecting right and correct and accurate offline data. So if you look at this slide, maybe some of you have seen it, but for those who haven't, uh, despite the rapid growth that we've all been purviewed to for, for e-commerce over the last 10 to 15 years, the reality remains that 85% of all commerce in the retail sector still continues to happen in the offline space. So having capabilities like Facebook's offline conversion, uh, as well as having the right uh, offline data is incredibly important for us to actually leverage to drive the right business outcomes for these retailers as you can see that 85% of those actually rely on the on the actions that are happening in the physical space and not on a web platform so the next obvious question as you can think about it would be so how do you go about driving customers to your retail stores and measure the results that are meaningful to you next slide please so if you were an actual e-commerce business, um, I think it's really incredibly easy. The digital marketing has made it incredibly easy for us to do that. The two main ingredients for, for driving uh, online digital campaigns for e-commerce typically rely on pieces like a cookie or a mobile ad ID and a pixel. Those two features actually help you both understand who are the people who are visiting your store? What is the makeup of those people? Uh, whether they're male or female, or what age group they belong in, what's their household income, all those things. And furthermore, they're actually able to understand what is their interaction, sorry, still previous slide, if you don't mind, uh, Bader, um, is what's more important is to actually have them understand what are they doing while they are actually on your website? What products are they interacting with? What did they spend? What did they buy? What is their overall lifetime value as they go through that journey? Having those key data points is incredibly powerful for e-commerce businesses to leverage for creating uber segmented audiences and optimize for the outcomes that are most important to them next slide please now if you think about the same equation for the real world it's not as easy as i just made it sound like for the online space um, there isn't always an easy way to understand who are the people who are coming to your store let alone the fact when they are in your store, what are they doing? How much time are they spending? What product did they interact with? Did they walk out after buying a product or did they walk out without actually buying a product? Those key pieces without the app, in the absence of those three things, the job for a marketer whose, whose objective is to drive in-store visits and in-store transactions becomes incredibly hard. For him or her to answer questions like, how do you measure visit behavior? Can you attribute results to advertising? Oh, what results do you use for optimization purposes are oftentimes very, very, very hard for them to answer, right? So to further articulate that problem, uh, next slide, Bahadur. Further articulate that problem, what I wanted to do was to actually bring to you a few, a couple of quick data points. What you see over here is, is, is a split of performance 
on across two platforms, very, very uh, common, uh, typical to us, Facebook and Instagram. And you can imagine in the absence of some of that offline data that I was just speaking to earlier, what a lot of these offline marketers are, are sort of forced to do is, is, to, is to optimize their campaigns using online signals, like an engagement or a page like. So in this example, as you will see, is, is, is Facebook, despite having a third less uh, ad spend on it versus Instagram, was actually the better performing segment, uh, better performing uh, platform, both from a pure volume standpoint, as well as from an efficiency standpoint. Now, what if actually you actually did have some offline data to actually operate off of? In this scenario, what I have over here is, is walkthroughs and cost per walkthroughs. So as a quick reminder, Melinda, Melinda alluded to this earlier, walkthroughs is a custom metric for, for ZenReach where we essentially say an interaction with a marketing engagement like an email or, a, or an ad that then results in a visit into a physical store is what we call a walkthrough. Um, the world, if when you lay over, overlay that offline data, it's actually flipped. This picture is very different at that point, right? When you look at this now, Instagram is actually the one that's driving nearly 2x more walkthroughs and is doing so at a much more efficient rate. So now had you not had the, 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 the luxury of having that data, you would have probably, in your next ad campaign, you would have probably spent more in Facebook and the outcome wouldn't have actually mattered and you wouldn't have probably seen it in your top or bottom line in your business. However, having that real data, offline data, you were actually on the right track in the first place with Instagram and you could continue to do that and hopefully see it in your overall business outcomes that really care, matter to you. That's the kind of power that offline data can actually really bring when you partner up with Facebook's offline conversion capabilities. So next slide, please. So as you think about that, right? Like how do you go about tracking that visit behavior in the real world location? The good news is um, the, the evolution of new technologies like, like point of sale, cloud-based point of sale systems or loyalty systems or Wi-Fi, which is what primarily ZenReach uses, um, the, the job of actually collecting or the task of collecting a lot of that offline data has become a lot easier than it used to be 10, 15 years ago. Um, I would love to walk you through over the next 30 seconds on how you, we actually at ZenReach um, attempt to actually collect a lot of that data and help businesses grow not only their overall CRM program, but also give them visibility and understanding of who are the people who are coming into their store and what are they doing while they're over there. So Wi-Fi, as you can imagine, we're all, every one of us is walking around. Um, one more click, if you don't mind, Bahadur. So each and every one of us is actually walking with a Wi-Fi device in our pockets. Now that Wi-Fi device is constantly searching for other, for access points or routers that are available in a lot of different public places and stores, including stores um, for a Wi-Fi signal. So, Let's assume that you want to, you walk into a store or a cafe and you want to use the internet or the free Wi-Fi that's available at that store. What you would typically do is, is, is just take out your phone, select the network. At that point, you'll be asked to provide a email address or a phone number and you opt into that network and then you're well on your way to actually using the free Wi-Fi that's available in your store. I hope you noticed over there that there was a value exchange that actually happened between the store or the brand and the consumer at that point, where the, the, the two cool things or the neat things about Wi-Fi are really that they tend to, it tends to be a lot more passive. So it's not abrasive, it's not in your face. You don't have to purposely go out of your way to actually interact with that, with that system. And, but at the same time, it's also a, a, a value, it allows the business to interact with the customer. And it seems like a two-way transaction where the consumer is feeling like they're getting something in return for, for them providing a little bit of information about themselves. So anyways, getting back to, to our technology and how it works, once you're on, your, on, on the network, uh, next slide, please, if you don't mind, Bahadur. The cool thing is, is, is that you don't actually have to op, log into Wi-Fi and uh, ever again, when, you're, when you walk into your next ZenReach location, 
ZenReach, as of today, is actually available available in over 8,000 locations. Um, and as you can imagine, when once you're part of our network, you go from when you go from one location to another location, you are automatically able. We are automatically able to detect and understand your visitation behavior, and is able to provide our businesses a, a sound understanding of the makeup of the people that are coming into into your into their physical store. Next slide, please. So the, at, at this point, the value that the, the, the brand or the business is really getting is two prong. First and foremost, that uh, with the in-store Wi-Fi, they're obviously automatically able to sort of build up their CRM program and is able to understand not only through their website, who are the people who are interested in their, in their stores and their products, but through now also a touch point available in the physical store, they're able to continue to grow that CRM. And in some cases, we've actually seen that our Wi-Fi technology tends to allow them to the growth of that CRM to be even faster at times, right? The other really interesting thing over here is, is it, it allows, because of our network effect, we're, we, it allows us the, the, the business to actually understand the people who were pre previously invisible to them. Now, I want to be very clear over here, we, unless a, a consumer has opted in to provide their, their information to a location and a business, we would absolutely never share their information at the location that they walk into next. But what we actually can still do is, is, is provide aggregations about an understanding of the makeup of that person, right? Whether they were male, whether they were female, what age group, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of different attributes that you can then leverage for efficiently managing your, your, your and executing your advertising campaigns moving forward. That's the power of, of Wi-Fi that is much more larger because it's always on in it, to a certain capacity and is much more passive than a lot of other interactions are that you can leverage uh, through the through ZenReach uh, to grow your overall business. Next slide, please. So one more, please. So now that you actually have access to a lot of this really useful information, there's a number of things that you can actually do with it, right? As I had mentioned previously on our platform, it allows you to go and target um, your your ideal customers, if, whether it's based off a frequency visit, whether it's about their first visit, whether it's about their second, third, or fifth visit, there's a lot of different segmentation that you can do um, uh, uh, to actually target your ideal customer and drive the outcomes that you really care for. Additionally, what you can also do is 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 actually be able to more importantly measure the outcome of that of that of that interaction, right? Once they've actually, once you've communicated based on your segmentation, you can actually understand did your ad or did your email actually drive them back into a store or not at the end of the day, right? That is what I think having that closed loop mechanism really allows and gives the power back to the business at the end of the day of what they want to do. And also take that, that, that equation that all has that e-commerce has succeeded off of for a very long time and give it into, into the hands of, of a physical offline business. Additionally, of always, we provide full transparency into how the, the campaigns are performing. Um, and lastly, obviously, be able to also um, optimize on the fly. Again, that's a, even more powerful. Up till now, a lot of offline businesses, even if they had some data, they've typically only been able to see results and optimize in the next campaign. At the frequency that our network is, is evolving and growing, as well as our campaigns are, are, are executing, and our partnership, our custom partnership with Facebook allows us to get data on a daily real-time basis where we can take the learnings and apply it on a daily next, next day basis to optimize campaigns in flight rather than waiting for the campaign to end. Wait, uh, waiting another few weeks before the results come in and then execute and take those learnings to apply to the next campaign. So we're really making that, that online um, optimization and, and marketing model come to life for the offline space in a much more meaningful manner than it's ever been possible in the past. Cool. So now that you actually have a good understanding of your, of your, of your, 
how you would go about collecting useful um, offline in-store data. Now let's get to the fun part of what we were to, wanted to always talk about. How do you go about activating this in the Facebook playbook for in-store behavior? What I, what I would like to do over the next couple of slides is actually walk you through three very common objectives that I think we all as marketers are familiar with. Um, one is obviously driving new customer acquisition. Another one is around winning lost customers. And then last is, is, is converting some casual customers to become your loyalists and your advocates, right? We'll take a deep dive into each and every one of these over the next couple of slides so you can have a better understanding of how you can operationalize your in-store data and in partnership with your with Facebook's offline conversion capabilities, reap the benefits of, 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 of it. Next slide, please. Cool, so attracting new customers. Um, I think it's safe to say, I don't think there's ever a business that doesn't want new incremental customers, right? Um, who would want to not grow their business at the end of the day? So as you can think about it, in the e-commerce world, um, leveraging the power of like a pixel and the cookie, you're able to really understand who are the people coming into this into your store and then be able to segment them and create a really hyper-targeted seed audience or pool of people that you can then leverage to create lookalikes of um, for, for targeting purposes to drive increment, incremental growth for your business. Now, you can actually do the same thing if you have the right in-store data for, for, um, uh, for attracting new customers for your physical real-world business too, right? Through ZenReach, what you can do is, 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 is understand what are the people who are coming into your store, how often they're coming, what's their lifetime value, and based off of those, all those various data points, you're able to create seed audiences that you can then operationalize through Facebook or Instagram and be able to measure on uh, through walkthroughs and return on ad spend metrics uh, to understand the outcome that you're able to drive uh, and hopefully that shows through in your bottom line. What we've seen at ZenReach in, in some of these uh, campaigns that we've run for a lot of our, our, our partners and merchants is that uh, if we compare audiences built off of real world data versus those built off of online signals, we've driven 7x better performance on a lot of these campaigns than, else, than otherwise. I hope that number resonates with everybody of how powerful and effective you're if the data that you, and the signals you're using can really be in driving meaningful outcomes. Next one is around win, uh, win back lapsed customers. Um, so in many categories, what ZenReach has actually seen is, is that more than 60% of first time customers never end up coming back. That's a pretty big lost opportunity, right? Like if you think about it, they've expressed some interest, they came in, they transacted with you, but then they never came back. So again, that's an, that if you if this person is already interested in your brand, probably acquiring or re-engaging with them may be not as hard as we all can think of it as to be, right? Um, so over here, a lot having ZenReach's type of data where you can understand what's the time that's lapsed between the, the, a person's last visit till today or understanding how often have they come in and, then, and since then you haven't seen them come into the store. Again, you can create a lot more uh, valuable audience pools that you can then operationalize through Facebook and target them with really aggressive offers to bring them back into the store and continue to maintain and re-engage with them over time. That, that's 60% of the people will never come back to your store after their first visit. It's a massive lost opportunity if you don't take a second shot at these guys and these folks to convince them to actually come back and re-engage with your brand over time. What we've seen at ZenReach is, is, is LAPS customer campaigns have delivered over on average six to one ROS, which again has to be an incredibly powerful number if you think about the, the value if you can bring a lapsed customer back into your store. Cool. And so the last one that I think I would like to cover off with everybody is to nurture. How do you nurture casual customers to loyal? So think about this consumer journey, right? Um, it, through a lot of research, and I know vertical to vertical, this number will vary over time as well, and as, well as vertical. 
but we a lot every brand should ideally know how many interactions does it take for a casual customer to be converted into a loyalist and, and an advocate where they're so impressed with your brand not only are they coming continuously coming into your brand to re-engage with you buy your products and, and do so on an ongoing basis but they'll go as far to actually tell their family and friends about it as well right a casual customer will typically not do that but a loyalist will absolutely do that so as you can imagine it's a similar use case to the previous one but the reality over here is 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 again when you create cohorts of visit frequency data or visit uh, create cohorts where the customer is falling short of that loyal number of that inflection point where they become a become a loyalist you can truly go and operationalize and execute marketing campaigns to that objective and create creative and and, and wording and text in your marketing in your creative to actually be able to target them a lot more meaningfully than you would otherwise. Your measurement remains exactly the same at the end of the day. Track walkthroughs through Wi-Fi signal more, uh, as well as it, additionally, you can actually see if they sign up for your loyalty program. We have a lot of partnerships that exist um, through other uh, systems like point of sale systems and loyalty programs where we can actually take not only visit data, but go one step further and be able to tie it into how many people did we bring in and how many of those people brought into the store eventually signed up for your loyalty program. Um, and what we've seen at Zenreach through a, running a lot of these loyalty campaigns has been that the, a customer loyalty in LTV increases with every successive visit and goes from 37% after the first visit to over 63 after the third visit. That is two, nearly a 2x increase in, in the value of, of how a casual customer just change into a loyal customer at that point from there on, right? So a lot of really useful uh, use cases that hopefully highlight how using the right in-store data can eventually result in really meaningful outcomes. And Facebook, uh, guess what? Facebook provides a really, really nifty tool to actually operationalize a lot of this useful data. So in closing, um, really quickly, what I would just like to remind everybody is, is high-performing digital campaigns are driven by, by customer data. E-commerce has, has reaped the benefits of it, but for offline businesses, the world is not that far for you. Just have to find the right partners to actually partner to actually help you collect that customer data so you can understand who's coming into your store and what are they doing to then execute against your marketing objective. Uh, additionally, real world retailers can use Wi-Fi as a cookie for the offline world. Um, I just walk you through our technology that that benefit of Wi-Fi being a passive and always on capability allows you to really reach a lot higher set of people in the population and we have them join um, uh, and understand who are these people and, and their breakdown so you can actually execute much more efficiently. Seed audiences built from best customers will always outperform. And for uh, for the best customers, do not need to be on for a physical world. Do not need to come from an online space. It actually should come from an offline space. And lastly, using offline conversions to measure success and optimize performance, that's the holy grail. That's what we want to do. That's how e-commerce has succeeded to grow so fast. While offline business can do the same thing as well. Thank you for taking the time. But yeah, Bahadur, I think I'll pass it back to you. Um, so actually, Koppel, I'm going to take it from here. <laughs> um, we are going to do Q&A, but before we get to that, uh, we do want to offer our webinar attendees um, a couple of things. So you can um, request a guide from ZenReach. It's the Adapting Digital Remarketing for Real World Resu Results Guide. Um, so if you'd like that option, just go ahead and select that. Um, Hannapin also hosts Hero Comp. Uh, this year it's going to be, well, next year it's going to be in Austin. So if you'd like more information about our PPC only conference, select that. You can get both, you can get none. Um, and then while you fill that out, I'm going to go ahead and start with these questions because there are a lot. <laughs> um, so one question came in How is, I assume, how is ZenReach's solution different from Facebook store visits objective? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so a few things. Um, what Facebook store visit capabilities 
versus uh, Zenreach's Facebook capabilities. First and foremost, Zenreach, the data that we're actually leveraging is, is first party data set. So we partner with our merchants to actually uh, help them install the access point and the Wi-Fi router. And they have full visibility into the folks that are actually coming into the store the makeup of those people, who these people are. And we also allow them to re-engage not only through advertising, but also engage through email platforms. That is, so not in Facebook, you may just be able to understand sort of the general aggregated breakdown of those folks. We can actually give you one-to-one -one matching, which is really impactful for you to understand, was it Steve at yahoo.com or, or Mike at, at gmail.com who visited how often have they visited? Gives you, allows you the ability to create cohorts as I was talking about. When you think about retargeting uh, or you think about lapsed customers, the breakdown, having visibility into that, that one-to-one -one data allows you to cut and chop the, the cohorts as you please and to be able to target them in a much more efficient manner than some of that aggregation is, is uh, allows you to do in a store visit cap uh, feature capability. So some of that that control that I think all marketers would really like becomes a lot more av available as an option through through Zenreach's partnership than you would be able to do otherwise on the store visit uh, piece. Awesome, thank you. Um, so another question, how many events have to be uploaded at minimum for this to work? So is it about the offline conversion part or um, like the manual upload part, I guess? Uh, so um, there's really no minimum, especially after you upload your first uh, data set, then in order for uh, keeping it updated, uh, there's really no minimum. You can even offline like a single conversion and uh, Facebook algorithm will try to um, match it to the audience that has been served. Um, in the campaign. Awesome. Um, do offline conversions work with other digital platforms? I can take a crack at that um, over here. That this is a couple from Zenreach. Um, it absolutely can. So Zenreach, in our partnerships, obviously we're, we're fully integrated with our custom integration with Facebook's offline capabilities. But we've also built uh, partnerships with non-social platforms, uh, things like programmatic display and programmatic video that allow you to actually reap the benefits the same way as, as Facebook's platform can do, but to not only run your advertising on Facebook, but be able to also run your advertising and reach the customers where they are in the right moment at the right time on other platforms that's outside of Facebook. So offline capabilities are absolutely very much actionable and, and, and possible on other platforms outside of Facebook as well. Awesome. Um, how does Facebook, I assume like the native platform, uh, prefer perform in terms of matching the offline transactions? Like what's a typical match rate? So, that really depends to the quality of the information that we're uploading, depending on uh, how many fields we're uploading, how recent the information is. Uh, but assuming that we're following all best practices and the information is accurate, uh, I've personally seen match rates as high as like 100%. So all the data was matched to some sort of offline action. Um, Facebook does a great job in uh, terms of matching um, offline actions to, to audience information. So it really, it all comes down to the quality of the data that we're uploading. Awesome, thanks. Um, let's see, what about mobile locations? Does this affect the algorithm? Does that make sense to you guys? I'm guessing mobile locations, I can take a crack at this. I'm guessing by mobile locations, um, it really uh, means like a food truck. Um, I think it would it would really depend on the data that you're actually collecting at that point. 
and that you're uploading. Uh, Facebook's capabilities are very flexible as Bahadur had outlined earlier on, you can upload very multiple different types, Wi-Fi obviously being just one of them. Uh, but as long as you have the data that's being collected for for your your business um, and it's it's formatted and it, and it's accurate, you should be able to upload that into Facebook um, and be able to see uh, use it for both targeting and measurement purposes. Awesome. And they did send through a clarification, and you were exactly right with your thought, like a food truck. So good thinking on that one because my brain was not going there. <laughs> um, how does this approach play with like the new privacy expectations and regulation? I can take a, another crack at that one as well. So at ZenReach, uh, we take privacy very, very seriously. Um, and as a, uh, we are already GDPR compliant. So, but before even being GDPR compliant, I think a lot of it really starts with the ownership of the data. Um, at ZenReach, we're, we're collecting first party data and not third party data. So this is data that's co-owned by ZenReach and the business that we are partnering with. Um, obviously I mentioned earlier, we never share one business's data with another business. And I hope every, every uh, vendor that's partnering and providing that service to, to, to businesses out there, take that, that, that very seriously. We will never ever share or, or, or um, unlock a, a identity of somebody who opted into one location um, and has not chosen to opt into another location. Um, so first and foremost, uh, the we ZenReach will partner with the business and we cone that data, which makes it be first party. And so there's a lot more control on that. Additionally, as I mentioned, we being us being GDPR compliant, all our internal systems are able are are able to scrub at any point. Um, if a user wants to opt out of our network, they can easily, very easily do so uh, by going to our website, understanding what data do does ZenReach actually have about them. And then also right through that same information portal, able to request the data if they want to, to be deleted. And we'll absolutely do that immediately. So our systems are already set up in terms of GDPR compliance to actually be able to action off of any request that we get. And we are fully transparent on the information that we provide to our consumers about the information, the, the data that we actually have on them. Awesome, thank you for that clarification. Um, you know, I think this is a really interesting question. So what about flipping the situation around where the customer like browses at a store, but then they purchase online? Should we look at that behavior? Is it possible to track that behavior? Uh, what are your guys' thoughts there? So I'm assuming uh, this is like for the cases where there is like a um, interactive stand, like a kiosk in the store and um, or or are they talking about like offline kind of just browsing like in the store and then purchase online? Um, I, th I think if, if that's the first case, well, there's no like digital footprint of them. So like technically speaking, that won't be possible unless uh, there's a way that like we have tracked their uh, in-store digital activity um, in some sort of way, like they have logged into a system, which is very unlikely. Um, but in, in the in second scenario where we're talking about like physically browsing the products in the store, um, I don't know, Kapil, do you guys offer anything that facilitates that through ZenReach? At ZenReach, at the, at, the, at the current moment, we're not providing, like if, if, a, if a consumer is actually interacting at a store through through the the uh, shelves itself, um, uh, we're not obviously we're not there yet. But our integration with with uh, with a, a lot of our POS vendors, cloud based POS vendors, um, as well as loyalty, do allow us to actually understand what were the transactions that occurred. So it, did Steve come in on his first visit actually buy a cheeseburger? At a at a at a diner, and the next time they came, they ordered the meat a plate of the meatloaf. We are absolutely able to understand and track that, um, and are able to sort of make that available in terms from a targeting standpoint. I'll go even one step further to the original question, and I think um, 
uh, in addition to those two scenarios that Bahadur just elo very eloquently outlined, there's another interaction that I think is worth sort of highlighting of what happens if a consumer actually interacts with your website and then eventually goes to your store. So they see an ad and they interact with your website and then they go to a store or vice versa. They see, uh, they, they go to your physical store, but then they go back online. I think those are both variations that um, any smart marketer should be looking at. Um, it's a lot around omni-channel marketing at the end of the day, right? Uh, what we need to do is, is, is up till now, as we sort of started out with alluding to, the world has been very siloed where offline businesses were forced to use online signals because they didn't have the, the luxury of having a lot of that data available to them. Well, now that that data is available to them, um, it's important for us to bring that data together, the online interactions and the, uh, and the offline interaction, and to really look at the picture of the consumer journey as they sort of navigate from touch point to touch point and understand how to really sort of equate and measure the impact of each of those platforms in an omni-channel way. So I absolutely think um, it's a must have um, and every ch every marketer should be looking at that on how they can create a, a omni-channel equation for themselves. Awesome, thanks guys. Well, there are way more questions we're gonna be able to address here. Um, so we will go through those after the presentation, both on the Hannafin side and this and reach side and send out any um, appropriate follow up, especially there are several people who are asking like what it costs to implement and reach and I assume that's a little too complicated to get into on this webinar. Um, but I just want to take time to thank both Koppel and Bahador, as well as everyone who attended today. Um, this is really insightful from my perspective and I really appreciate everyone's time. Again, thank you from, from Zenreach side for Hannah Pin and Bahadur for allowing us to do this and as well as, as everybody who attended, hopefully this was good, good use of your guys' few minutes. Uh, yeah, thank you all. Thanks, Melinda, and thanks, Zenreach. Um, yeah, this, this is a very interesting technology that you have. I'm going to personally look into that for, for the campaigns that I'm running. So yeah, I may be your first client out of this <laughs> webinar, actually. Absolutely.